So the question I want to take up today isn't really a question, it's more of a statement because nobody asked the question. And the statement is that Scientologists believe L. Ron Hubbard was the reincarnation of Buddha. And this came up in another one of these short question and answer videos that I did recently, where I answered the question, do Scientologists realize L. Ron Hubbard was a science fiction writer? And in the process of answering that question, I was explaining why Scientologists don't see it as some sort of a red flag or some sort of a problem that L. Ron Hubbard was such a prolific science fiction writer or fantasy writer and also the creator of Scientology. And in the process of answering that question and explaining how Scientologists think about it, I discussed this fact of Scientologists believe that L. Ron Hubbard was the reincarnation of Buddha and has full recall of all of his previous lives. And someone in the comment section of that video said, you should retitle this video to reflect the fact that it discusses L. Ron Hubbard being Buddha. And I'm not going to retitle the video because the purpose of that video was to answer the question about science fiction. So I'm going to cheat on this a little bit today. And I'm just going to give this intro. I'm going to add it to the previous video. And I'm going to title this one something about L. Ron Hubbard being Buddha. It's a short video, so I apologize for the re-upload, but it's only seven minutes long, so it's not a big deal. But I really did want to have something searchable on my channel, on YouTube, about Scientologists thinking L. Ron Hubbard was Buddha. You really don't hear people talking about this very much. I think it's an interesting thing for people to know. And I think to some small degree, it might help answer another sort of ancillary question, which is what have Scientologists told themselves to explain why they are all listening to the words of this one man? Like Scientologists will tell you they do not worship L. Ron Hubbard. Scientologists will tell you they do not see L. Ron Hubbard as anything more than a really smart guy or mankind's best friend. But depending on what you're looking at, that's also how Buddhists feel about Buddha. So anyway, I'm a little conflicted about re-uploading a video I already did, but I think it's for the best. And I think a lot of people probably haven't seen that other video anyway. So here we go. Scientologists believe L. Ron Hubbard was Buddha, and here's a bit more information about that. Hi everyone, welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. Scientologists definitely do not think it is a red flag that L. Ron Hubbard wrote so much science fiction that he was such a prolific science fiction writer and that so much of the Scientology story mirrors what he wrote in science fiction. You might think that they're worried about a cause and effect relationship, that him being a science fiction writer was the cause and the effect was him inventing Scientology. And the way Scientologists come to understand this is that it was actually the opposite, that the same native abilities that allowed L. Ron Hubbard to be able to develop Scientology were the same abilities that he was tapping into to be able to write science fiction at such an incredible pace. So one thing to understand is that Scientologists believe that we are all immortal spiritual beings who have been around for trillions of years and cannot die. And that the goal of Scientology is to raise everybody up from their current spiritual awareness, which is not being very aware at all and thinking you're stuck inside of bodies and thinking you die every 80 years and raise everyone up back to their native state where they are immortal and live forever and they don't think they're bodies and they don't think they die every 80 years. And so they think L. Ron Hubbard mastered this in previous lifetimes. They think L. Ron Hubbard started his work that in his most recent lifetime became Scientology. They believe he started this work in his previous lifetimes and believe that L. Ron Hubbard was Buddha. Okay. <laughs> You don't hear this very many places, but ask anyone who spent a lot of time in Scientology and they will tell you, yes, we were all sort of led to believe that L. Ron Hubbard was Buddha and that, um, and forgive me if I get some of this terminology wrong, but, uh, but as Buddha, when he researched and uh, discovered the state of Bodhi, that's why I'm not sure if I'm using these words correctly, but that this state that Buddhists are trying to achieve called Bodhi, God, I hope I'm getting that right, was only a temporary version of what is now a Scientology clear. And so that L. Ron Hubbard was Buddha and he did a bunch of his research and stuff back then and that there was a prophecy that somebody would come back in the West with red hair. This is how L. Ron Hubbard explained it. And that L. Ron Hubbard coming back was the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Matea 
And again, I've had people who actually understand Buddhism tell me that all this is total horseshit and L. Ron Hubbard got all of this wrong. But that he came back and finished his work that he started as Buddha and finished it by developing Dianetics and Scientology and that the state of Scientology clear is a permanent and higher level version of what a, a Bodhi was back when he was Buddha. And so why am I mentioning all of this? Because Scientologists believe that L. Ron Hubbard has been working on this mission of his, this mission that became Dianetics and Scientology, for many, many, many lifetimes. And that L. Ron Hubbard had for himself solved the problem of full recall of previous lives in his previous lives. So they believe that L. Ron Hubbard, when he was born into a body this lifetime in 1911 or whatever the hell it was, that he had full, complete, and total recall of all of his previous lives right from the beginning. So they believe the reason he was able to write so much science fiction is because he was just writing from his memories. It wasn't fiction, or it was informed fiction. It was based on his experiences. He didn't have to sit down and write out, uh, you know, chart out the whole plot of a book and do rough drafts and then tweak the story and do second drafts and third drafts, that he would just sit down in one fell swoop and write a story from beginning to end. Which people who knew him at the time, you know, who had nothing to do with Scientology, do say that that's pretty much how L. Ron Hubbard wrote a book. He sat down and from the beginning to end just typed it out and it was done and ready to go to the printers, I guess maybe with some typos or whatever. But so, but this explains this, uh, this way of thinking about L. Ron Hubbard and his science fiction career and what he did in Scientology, explaining it this way, I, I think should help everyone understand why they don't see it as a red flag. And what's so funny is that even though society looking in on this goes, isn't that a red flag? To Scientologists, it actually reinforces what they are told about Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard. Instead of being a red flag, it's actually to them proof that L. Ron Hubbard really was this greater than life guy who transcended these spiritual barriers and blazed trails spiritually that nobody else had been able to blaze before. And the fact that he was able to write all this science fiction is just evidence of how far he had come down that trail that he had blazed back when he was Buddha. You never really hear this get mentioned very much. I'm sure a lot of people have mentioned it, but I think what happens is when people talk about these things, they end up getting buried in the middle of like one hour, two hour, three hour interviews. And so chances are there just aren't that many people who've heard this part of the story. Quick mention, there's one other video on this channel that is the funniest story I have ever heard Mark Headley tell. And I just noticed yesterday, it doesn't have anywhere near as many views as I would have thought, because it's a very short video and it's very funny. If you have not already seen it, just Google David Miscavige blowjob. <laughs> it just fills my heart with warmth to think of someone in the Office of Special Affairs having to report up to David Miscavige about this story of him giving a blowjob. Oh my God. That's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye.